day 48. So we have massive packs as we are carrying eight days of food from Bishop to Ta Mammoth. Where are we going? From Bishop, well, technically independent, from Onion Valley to Mammoth. So 115 miles. We're hoping to do it in six or seven, but we have an extra day for if we fall short. But right now we're headed to the post office to get some packages and then hopefully trying to get a ride back down to Independence. Hey yo, your girl got herself some Jolly. So we just popped into the post office where my good pal Jolly of Jolly Gear decided to send me a new shirt since mine was looking rough. And now we match! Look how cute we are! <laughs> um, most of you know I wore a prototype last year um, for my last couple of days on the CDT and uh, totally love Jolly Gear. Had a shirt at home, but didn't want to ruin it, but Jolly, so kind to send me a shirt. So now me and Long John are the Jolly crew. But anyway, thank you so much Jolly for sending me this nice shirt. Mine was disgusting. So now the journey to find a hitch back to independence. Fingers crossed. So we were able to get a ride from a PCT hiker from a few years ago who saw us and brought us the whole way from Bishop back up to the Onion Valley Trailhead. So we're very, very thankful for Luca. And now we start the climb back up Gear Sarge with heavy hearts and heavy packs. We are about a mile just below Glen Pass. We have about 900 feet and a mile in the morning. And our goal is to do that first thing and then make our way to Pincho, try to get over Pincho. But, you know, we'll see, we'll play it by ear. We have an extra day of food. So like if we can't quite make the miles that we are planning, we can, you know, have an extra day of food. Today we climbed up and over Kearsarge again. Probably don't ever want to do that pass again after doing it twice. Um, but I remember when we were coming down Kearsarge, I just kept thinking about how horrible it was going to be going back over. But honestly, today going back over it was not that bad. And I believe that it was just because we were so exhausted from doing like 20 miles and Forester Pass and Kearsarge on the same day that we were just so exhausted that I thought it was going to be much harder. So it wasn't super tough, um, but also got very, very windy. So as you can kind of see or hear, um, it's going to be gusty for the next couple of days. So we are just rocking our stakes really tight and um, it's very early. We, it's like maybe five o'clock and we are... <laughs> Probably gonna try to. Whoop, whoop. <clears throat> it is five o'clock, and we're probably going to go to sleep pretty early, um, because I'm tired. And uh, why not? Um, yeah. So that's where we're at. Also, I fell in a post hole, and I don't know if you can see that scratch on my butt. But I fell in a like waist deep post hole and uh, Corey had to come rescue me. <laughs> um, I got a scratch in my ass, so that's a little tender, but you know, it happens. Anyway, not the most exciting day. We only did about like eight and a half miles, um, but 
that was what we had planned for today. We were supposed to kind of narrow out and I think we achieved that. And tomorrow we're gonna see if we can tag Glen Pass and Pincho. So fingers crossed, we'll report back tomorrow. And that's gonna be all from today. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Bye. Good morning. We are finishing our last mile of Glen Pass this morning. And it is cold. You can see Tom and Kate down there. <sighs> Made it to the top. Longest mile of my life. What, your glissade? Oh, you just self-arrested? Were you so scared? On a scale of one to 10, that was like a two. Like I had more fun on that than any other pass so far. Well, I will say, <clears throat> you're lucky enough to weigh like nothing. So your feet didn't slip. <laughs> I didn't sink. Yeah, I'm like looking like your feet are just like on top. I step and it's like crumbles like a foot and a half down. I'm like, shit. <laughs> Heavy boy. All right, so my opinion on Glen Pass is the mile up felt like forever, but the north face was fun. Um, because the snow was hard, the traverse was not sketchy at all, not scary, did use ice axes though. And then, um, yeah, not a lot of post holing. I'm gonna rate it highly on this list of passes so far. So I think it was the one I had the most fun on so far. Head first. <laughs> go ahead, scooch. There you go. <laughs> it's, just, it's not moving. <laughs> My balls can't. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Save some weight and to make sure we got the most calories. We're having ramens for lunch. I'm having soy. Corey's having some mixture of bacon bits and shin ramen and whatever else he puts in his. So we can have a hot lunch. After a nice long break at the river, we are doing the last few miles and starting our climb up Pincho to the campsite. A relatively low mileage day, about 13 miles. We are a few miles, about four miles below Pincho Pass, 
and we'll be tackling that tomorrow. Today we just did Glen, which was to me was one of the most fun passes we have done, and then took a nice long lunch break at the river, and then started our climb up Pincho, and we will be in bed early again. Last night we fell asleep at like 6 o'clock and slept for 12 hours, so hopefully tonight maybe we'll do the same thing. But we're just going to make some dinner and get ready for Pincho. So good night from day 49. Good morning from day 53. No, day 50. Day 50 <laughs> of the Pacific Crest Trail. We are approximately three miles below the peak of Pincho Pass. We are getting a somewhat late start for the Sierras. Start. It's after seven. We're already sweating. Pincho Pass is hailed as not one of the hardest climbs, but it is still one of the highest passes. And I learned last night that it was named after some guy with the last name Pincho, who Theodore Roosevelt appointed as the first U.S. Secretary of what is it? Forest Service. Forest Service. Forest Service. Forest Service. Forest Service. And he was also, he became the governor of Pennsylvania. So, that's pretty cool. All right, off we go. Gotta go all that way, somewhere up there. Made it to Pincho! Woohoo! Alright, this is the first pass we've been able to sit on the top of because of the wind and temperature. It's actually really warm today, which made it a little bit of a slush slog. But we made it. There was absolutely no need for spikes or axe or anything. It was very, very safe. And you'll see on the south side there's very little snow. <clears throat> Very little snow, so it should make for easy descent. Today for lunch we're having, just kidding, it is ramen but it's in the bag. So we put it, we put the water in and then we put it inside of here to rehydrate. So aside from the ramen, what else are we putting in all of our lunches for calories? Uh, olive oil and bacon and Olive oil. After another long siesta by this beautiful creek, river, r raging, whatever it is, we're headed up Mather. All right, you can see Glen Pass, and we're about a mile and a half away, and only 550 feet. So we'll be up and over and on our way to Muir Pass. Tonight we are just, we found, so initially we were gonna camp about two and a half miles south, but when we got there it was completely covered in snow, and Corey and Tom had the bright idea to just chance that there would be some dirt up here. And as you can see, we have found the next and the last tent site which is like the last bailout site so we're very happy to have dry campsite tonight not have to camp on the snow and just a little ways to go up Glen Pass tomorrow
Pincho Pass was easy and beautiful. Um, and then we only did like 12 miles today. So we went up Pincho, we'll finish Pincho, came down Pincho, and we started our climb up Mather. And as you've seen, we're camped in one of the most beautiful campsites of my life. It's stunning. Um, but we are going to finish our climb up Mather tomorrow, head down and see how far up Mirror Pass we can get. So today there was a lot of slushy, slushy snow because it was much warmer. So that gave us a little bit more of a challenge, but yeah, it was a beautiful day. And we saw some type of print, uh, either a wolf <laughs> or a fox print, um, just south of where we are camped. So if you know anything about the Mather Pass wolf or fox, let me know. Um, but anyway, it's going to be good night from day 50.